Okay, here's our update on Uranium. We'll use CCJ as our proxy as we usually do. As always, take a look at the links in the description. You'll see the previous Uranium video, broader market update as well. The broader market, everything is very correlated right now, so you'll really want to understand where the broader market is going because that's what's going to push Uranium around. And so we'll start with the daily chart as we've been talk as I've been talking about on Twitter. As always, I'll have a link in the description to my Twitter. We're on day 23. We're, we're, we we knew we were in the daily cycle decline once we had this swing high, right? That's where this line is, below 29.89, right? So this candle marks the high. Once we cross below the low of this candle, we've started a downtrend, right? So we made a lower low. This was our lower high. We made a lower low. This was our lower high. This is our lower low. So we now expect... At the very least, another lower high, right? So we're gonna we let some kind of bounce. Maybe that's our daily cycle low, but it also like it could be a daily cycle low and it could be a bearish daily cycle low, right? So you know the daily cycle tops out on day like seven, eight. So that's what we're gonna watch for. Ultimately, we know this is gonna probably bottom with the stock market. And what I'll call out here is this gap here, right? So we had this daily cycle low on day 35. We had all this consolidation, right? So we had this this swing high below this candle's low, which was 25.72. We just kind of consolidated. Then we had the big draft lower. And then we had a huge rebound. I mean, look at this gap, right? So we got from 23.76 to 24.70. A dollar gap on a $24 stock. That's a huge gap. And notice where this wick kind of penetrated just a little bit, right? So it got right below that level. That's why I say they're not levels, they're zones, right? But notice it stopped there and then reversed higher. That's not a coincidence, right? There was big money that decided to buy here and sell here, right? Like there's a reason this gap exists, right? Market participants chose these prices, and so there's it makes sense that it would react there. Now, the next question is, do we close the gap? I suspect that we do. Again, as, as I said on Twitter, we knew that that was likely once it happened. Most gaps get filled. It's nothing to be emotional about. It's it's going to be fine, and it's if anything, that's an important sort of risk mitigation area, right? Like, oh, there's a gap. Okay. It's probably going to get filled. So let me make a decision. Maybe I, that's my chance to accumulate some more. So maybe I hold back from buying until the gap gets filled, for instance. It also could be the case that this gap doesn't get filled. And like, this is just a sign of strength. It just like rockets from here. We'll know that from the price action. We'll see it. But it's really good to see that there was a reaction to this so far, right? Because it could have just sank through this, but it didn't. Now, it doesn't mean it won't later I, I suspect it will honestly but the fact that we have this initial bounce is actually quite promising and if we look at the weekly that's why it tells me we probably do just keep drooping lower i mean look at that and you, as you can see from the previous videos the way this candle looked before i mean at some point it was green right and it actually looked like it might be a bullish outside candle right and that's important to understand how candles form how they did look, how they used to look, right? And so this looked like at some point it could go all the way and like make a new high and just keep going. Then it just failed lower and just massively lower. And you expect we could be testing this 22 area, which I mean at 26, losing $4 on a $26 stock, that's obviously not ideal. But with the broader market moving into a uh, in weekly cycle decline, I should say, and moving into a daily cycle low after a uh, you know day four top, that's something that you have to be pay attention to. You're probably going to get some massive downside on volatile uh, sort of uh, asset classes like uranium miners in this case. So and and this is obviously just CCJ. If we look at like your just some of your uranium miners just in general, let's see. So I mean this is Cameco. So that's We'll start. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep with the monthly. Yeah. So if we look at the at the monthly level, they're all they're all they're all red, 
as we, I mean, not surprising, right? Like, we're not surprised that they're all red because they mostly follow the same pattern. Even Paladin, which was looking pretty bullish, has gone pretty bearish in terms of an upper, like that, like bearish sh sort of shooter. So yeah, we're if we're either almost making new lows or in some cases we've already kind of touched new lows. So caution is warranted, right? And if we go back to CCJ, just kind of zoom in, we've talked about this, the idea that like this is kind of a double top. And on, on the other on that other chart, we we kind of drew that line, that like sloping line, make it very clear. It's a downtrend, right? This did not get as high as this. And now we're moving lower by evidence, evidence by the fact that it's it's red. So we just have to be patient. That's all. That's all you can really we, we can really do. If you want to be really aggressive, you could short. I don't like this. Is not the thing I would short. Um, maybe something like SMH. I might, but yeah. See, right. This is like <laughs> that's a perfect example, right? Like this thing is making new lows. Looks like we're we want to take a shot at like the 175 area right and we're at 192 so that like that's a probably a better short opportunity but if anything but but in general markets are going lower